Hello guys, welcome to EGTV Presents Tech View, another episode. In this episode, I'll show you guys um, how you can set it up a patching tools, Microsoft native patching tools. Like patching means how you can update your Windows operating system, like how you apply the updates. So for applying the updates to Windows server or workstation or laptop, you need to have some tools. So Microsoft has some tools. Microsoft has its own native tools. And also you can do it through the third party tools. So today I will discuss about one of the Microsoft tools, which is called WSAS. How you can apply patch or updates through the WSAS to your um, Microsoft Windows Server or Windows 10 or 11, which is workstation or laptop. So that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. And I I will have another video later on um, and like for how you can apply the patch to Microsoft SCCM, System Center Configuration Manager to the SCCM. So the SCCM is a huge, and most of the company use the SCCM, but I will have the both video, but today's like dedicated for, uh, today's video is dedicated for WSS. Like through the WSS, how you can patch your environment, like your Windows environment. So that's what I will show you. And before I show you, I'm going to share my screen um, and also, All right. So I'll show you something here. I have some diagram here. You see the Microsoft. So how this process happened? How this process happened? First, you have to understand that, and then you can go through the WSL server. So the story behind the patch release and how you can apply. So if you can understand this diagram, that will be more easier for you. And in general, most of the organization follow this structure. But maybe different, different, it can be a different story with the different date and time. But it's in I said in general. So the Microsoft released patch on second Tuesday of the month. When? every second Tuesday. Every second Tuesday of the month. So second Tuesday means what? If you consider it today is 5th May 2024. And if I think about this month patch release from the Microsoft. So based on this statement, second Tuesday of uh, of the month, that means second Tuesday. So seventh is the first Tuesday of May 2024, right? So the second Tuesday will be 14th May 2024, 14th. So 14th May 2024, Microsoft will release their monthly patch. And after that, you have to think. So that's why I said, if you have a WSAS server setup, so WSAS is a feature for Windows of Windows Server. So if you have any Windows Server operating system, you can install the Windows WSAS server to install the that feature. It's a role. So feature or role, whatever. So you can install it. It's it's in build with your Windows operating system. You, can, you just need to install it and configure it, that's it. So what do you need to do? You need to do the setup and also you can uh, how you can apply it. If you have a WSA server, you can apply the patch through some GPO policy. So I have a separate video for group policy. If you don't know how to create a group policy or uh, how to apply the group policy, you can watch my other video, but in this video, I'll show you actually what kind of group policy settings you need 
and how you're gonna set up the WSL server and through the WSL server, how you're gonna schedule the patch. So this is the patching schedule concept. So WS is gonna be checked all the time with the Microsoft when they're releasing. So when Microsoft is released, WS server will download the patch. That means your WS server needs to have internet connections because it's gonna it's, it's only WS will communicate with the Microsoft. And there will be another GPU policy which will be linked with all of your servers and workstation that will block to communicate Microsoft to check the updates and install automatically. That's gonna be blocked because if you open everything, then you WSL server will not have any control. And your network gonna be all the time busy because each and every server is gonna be directly communicated with the Microsoft. That means your network will be busy. So you, that's, you cannot like handle, that's you cannot allow. That's why we have a WSL server. So only one day schedule time, we're gonna check our servers with our WSS and then they download the patch, all the servers. Think about you have 10 development server, 10 staging server, maybe 50 production server group A, 50 production server group B and 500 workstation. Just think about. So your WSS job, WSS server job is to check all the time with the Microsoft and download the latest patch here. And then from here, based on your group policy and schedule, you're gonna install the patch to your workstation, your server, your server, like development server, staging server, production server. Production server, I have two, like server A and B. Why? Group A and group B, because if you have a cluster configured or if you have a, um, a redundancy configured, like for example, uh, database server cluster configure, right? So if you have a two database server and a high availability, then if you apply the path in the both server in the same day, and if there is any issue happening with the patching, that means both server will be down. And if there is multiple database for some multiple application, all those applications will be down. So that's cannot allowed. You cannot be allowed those things. So that's why on group A, you can say, okay, um, that is a database server A, database server number one, cluster server, this is a cluster two, two or three, four, whatever you can have. So think about two database server. So you can one database server in group A, another database server you can do on group B. So that means what? If you have a cluster, that means when, you, when this server is, group A database server is down, it's gonna be moved to B and application will be available, right? That's why not only just database server, there will be a lot of dependencies, a lot of cluster server you can have in your environment. So that's why you should have a group A and group B. You, you can be separate if you have a relation like dependency. So if both server, cluster server, maybe six server in a relation, six server is a cluster and providing support to an application. So if you apply all six server at the same day, if you apply the patch and all are down, that means your application is down, which you can, which are not allowed because your organization may be not allowed any downtime. So that's why you should have a group A and group B for the production. So based on the Microsoft release, the second Tuesday of the month, then it's gonna be downloaded to WSS server and second Tuesday, Microsoft release, right? So second Wednesday, you can research that patch. You can research on Google, you can see, or some Microsoft forum, you can see, is there any kind of issue with this release, with this uh, uh, update release? People are gonna be like reporting to the Microsoft or maybe Microsoft forum, so you can check it validate it. So the, for the validation, you can spend time for Wednesday. And then the second Thursday, you can apply the patch to your development server. So say, for example, you have 10 devs development, development or test, test machine. If something goes really bad, who cares? Because it's a development, right? It's a test environment. So you can test it. You can apply the patch 
And then if you see, okay, there is no problem with this patch, everything working fine on Friday morning. So, so developer server, actually you can apply not after hours, you can apply on the business hours. So business hours and after hours difference is, uh, some companies business hours start from eight to five or eight to six, or some companies from morning 6 a.m. to afternoon or uh, like 6 p.m. Or some companies business hours is from morning 6 a.m. to uh, like afternoon or night uh, 8 p.m. Some companies business hours start from morning 9 a.m. to like afternoon or evening of 5 p.m. So it depends on company's business hour. That's why I didn't mention any time. So after hours means the after the business hours, that's the after hours. So development server you can do on a after hours and the development server you can do. So development server you can do um, business hours, it doesn't matter or after hours. It depends if your company allowed, you can do on business hours. So at, at the same day time, you can check and validate after the patch or maybe on Friday morning, second Friday morning, you can check, right? So if everything goes fine, then on third Monday after hours, you can apply the patch to third week. Third Monday means third week Monday, you can apply on your staging server because your staging server gonna be aligned with your uh, production, right? The same kind of configuration. Staging means whatever configuration you have on your production, you have the same kind of configuration on your staging server. But staging is not production, staging is staging. It's for your another kind of testing environment. So you can apply the patch on your staging servers, you can have maybe 50 staging servers, you can have maybe uh, 30 uh, or maybe 200 staging servers, it doesn't matter. To the group policy, all of them you can apply the patch on third Monday of the uh, third Monday of the month, that is third week Monday of the month, after hours. And you can validate. And then production, group A and group B, I already explained why group A and group B. If you have a cluster, definitely you will have a cluster system. Definitely you will have a redundancy system. So that's why you can make separate. Database server A, you're gonna patch with the group A. Database server B, you're gonna patch with the group B. Okay. So th uh, third Tuesday of the month, after hours, you can do the group A production. And Groovy. So you, you actually, you don't need to do anything. You just need to approve the patch and everything will do by GPU. GPU will apply GPU through the GPU. Your production machine will download the patch from WSAS and based on your group policy settings schedule, it will start installation and then reboot the server. Everything gonna be defined on your GPU policy. And the workstation. So every month, third Monday of the morning business hour. This is third Monday, that is third week of the Monday, every month business hours. So it's gonna be a fixed schedule because Microsoft has a fixed schedule. That's why you can have your fixed schedule for passing. Business hours, why this one is in the business hours? Because workstation is different. For example, maybe you can have 500 workstation. It can be a desktop, it can be a laptop. So if you cannot do it on a business hours, after hours, it, how are you gonna apply it? If your workstation means it's used by your office employee. So if the employee is not working and him or her uh, laptop or desktop is power off, how are you gonna push the patch? You cannot, right? So that means in a business hours, definitely, they're gonna log in, they're gonna do work, their office work, right? And that time they, they will be online. So that time you can just push the patch to their workstation. That's why you say business hours is allowed. And everything gonna be done by your group policy. And I'll show you, I, I will explain what's the group inside of the group policy. So 
this is the structure. This is the structure, how you're gonna do the patching. So if you know this structure, that's all. That's all. If you know that structure, that's all. So now I'll show you how to set up the WSOS. So I'm going to show you step by step. So I have a server name, WSOS. I'm going to just log in the server and I'll show you step by step. And I'm going to add the server. So I'm going to add it here. So I'm going to log in my server. Actually, uh, the server IP is 50. And I can say, let's try with this one. Any user, it doesn't matter. I have a username, this one, let's try. If I can log in, if I cannot, then I can use the different one. Yes, I'm able to. So as a SIM admin, it's a service account. And that account has the privilege access to uh, any do the RDP session with any server because I use a GPU policy for that. And also I have the video for that, how you can uh, create a group policy and assign a user to do the RDP through the group policy. All right. So I just logged into the server. So first, first thing is if you want to install, so you need a dedicated virtual machine and also you need to have a operating system on it. Definitely it should be Windows because we are talking about the Windows server pass, Windows, Windows, Windows patching, not server, Windows patching. So Windows patching means Windows server and Windows workstation, laptop or desktop. So you have to have a dedicated server for WSUS. So that means what you need to have a, it can be a physical machine, it can be a virtual machine. If it is a virtual machine, that means you have to install a Windows Server operating system. So it can be Windows Server, any version 2012 or 2012 or two is actually end of life almost. So I think it's end of life. Yeah, it's the end of life. So 2016, 2019 or 2022, any version. And it can be standard edition, it can be data center edition, doesn't matter. So my edition is, my uh, uh, Windows version is 2019 standard edition. So I'll show you step by step. So you have to have it. This is the requirement. And also I have a um, two drive, actually I need two drive. Actually one drive is showing here and drive is not showing. I'm going to actually add that drive. It's when I create the virtual machine, I assign second drive, but it's not showing because you have to claim the disk. So disk here, I'm going to claim the disk. Uh, it's offline. Now you can just write bring online. Yes. Right click on it. New volume. Next. Next. Yes. 200 or 300, whatever you want. You can just have it. It's gonna be created let drive letter E or if you want, so you can change it. You can just change it, whatever drive you want. It doesn't matter. Next. And the volume name, you can say uh, data or something, whatever. It doesn't matter, it's up to you. And create. So it's not gonna take that long. It's gonna create another drive within short time. All right, it's done. So now if you go here, you see you have a drive. So we're gonna create a folder name, W says data, W says data, or you can have something like that. All right.
Now, what actually the important things? The important thing is I have to install WSS role. I don't have any WSS role here. So how are you gonna install it? Because my target is to make this server as a WSS server. So I have to install that role and then I have to do some configuration. Then it's gonna be a WSS server. So there is some process and it will take time. It's not, you cannot do it within one or two hours. It's gonna take a long time. So I'll show you step by step. So dashboard from the server method dashboard, add a role and feature, click next, click next. And you see the WSS server is showing here based on my name and server role will go all the way down. You see Windows server update services. That's why in short it's called WS. US, that's mean W SAS, Windows Server Update Services. All right, select it, add feature, click next, click next, next. And in here it says WD connectivity, WSS service, or Windows SQL. So this is the inbuilt database for WSS. You don't need to have any other database, but if you have any SQL database, you can just uncheck this one and you can check this one. So you can connect with that database. You can connect with that database. But right now, I don't have any database. So a SQL database, what I can do, I can select is like a, a WD connectivity. So in uh, uh, when we learn uh, SCCM, in that time, I'll show you how you can set up a WSAS with SQL, but right now I'm going with the built-in one, built-in database. Okay, click next. And now it's looking for a path where WSL is gonna be store the patch. So that's why we already created a, a folder here on our E drive, you see. So WSL, I just need to have this path. So copy, uh, just go inside of this folder and then Copy the address bar here, so it's gonna show you the path, right? And just paste it here. And click next, and next. Now in here, maybe you need some thing, but some basic authentication, uh, Windows authentication, sp.net, so if, if, if that, those, Things will take time. We can, if you need something, if it's missing, you can do it later on. You can add later on. Click next. And before you do that, make sure you click here. Yes. And install. So now this will take time. This feature is going to be installed. So the roles is already installed, it's completed. So you can just hit close. So after you install the uh, WSS role, then immediately you're gonna see here, there is a notification flag, right? So click here, then you're gonna see, it says post deployment configuration, launch post installation task, click here. Then you're gonna see configuration required for Windows Server update service at SLB WSS. Post deployment configuration is running. You have to wait until it's finished. All right, so configuration required installation succeed on this. So the post installation is also done. Post deployment configuration is done. So now what you can do, we can just go to the tools so i mean right now the wsa ser server so from the tools you can see here windows server average service is showing here right now because the roles is installed so click here i'm going to minimize the server manager and now add snapping that means the update server service conversion wizard is just start so it's not, the configuration is not done yet. So I'm going to 
pin up here. So later on, like I don't need to go again and again on the server manager and tools because I already pin up with my um, taskbar. So here, all right, the first time, first time when you, when you set up the WSUS. So you install the role, then the post configuration is done, then you'll be able to open this wizard window and then click next and then uncheck this one just click next synchronize from microsoft update synchronize from another windows up if you have another ws server and if you want to take the updates from that ws server in that case you can select this one but we are not doing this because this is our first ws server so we're gonna synchronize it from the microsoft directly right to this server that's what our goal click next specify proxy server if you have a proxy server then you can specify here otherwise you don't need to click next okay so in here it says specific, uh, download update information from the microsoft update to configure windows server update service on the following screen you need to apply your upstream server and proxy okay inform okay types of the update available product that can be updated available up like click start connecting to this uh, to save and download the upstream server and proxy server information. This process might take a several minutes or longer, depends on your connection speed. Okay, so now if I start connect, start connecting, sometimes it takes one hour, sometimes two hours, sometimes four hours or five hours. It depends on your internet connections. So I'm going to start it and I cannot finish it. So I, I, ha I have to pause this video and whenever it's finished and I, then I have to come back because I don't know when it's going to be finished, right? So it's, it can be take one hour, it can be take two hour, three hour, four hour. So I'm just going to start. Now it's going to take time. It's going to take time. So in the meantime, what we can do to just save the time, because you know in the beginning I discussed, you need WSO server and how the WSO server push the patch based on the schedule, how it's going to be push the patch to the uh, client machine, the server or maybe workstation, right? I, I said how through the GPU. So that means we have to set up some GPU policy based on our target. So uh, how many GPU policy you have to create? One, two, three, four, five. Five GPU policy we have to create for that. So one GPU policy uh, with the schedule for just applying policy to this. So let, let's see how we can create that policy, right? So for creating your policy, you have to go to your Active Directory machine or maybe your jump machine where you have the Active Directory, all the features, you can go there also. But I'm going to my Active Directory directly because I have access there, it's open and available. That's why. It's not mandatory, you have to go to your domain controller. It's not mandatory. If you have all those features is enabled, to your like administrative server and administrative tools is enabled on your jump machine. You can access through from your jump machine also. Anyway, so I have already created one policy here, which is WSS policy for DAB second Thursday based on this, right? Oh, sorry, it's Thursday, right? Actually, I have to change this one. It says Monday, right? So. I'm going to show you step by step since I already have it, but I'm gonna describe. So how are we gonna create a policy? It's pretty simple, right? Click new and then whatever the name you're gonna provide, click okay, then it's gonna be created. So that's how I create this one. And after that, what I did, right click on it, go to the edit options and then go to the policy and then go to the administrative template, Windows component, so I'm going to just expand a little bit to read it clearly. Okay, and then go all the way down, Windows Update. And click here. Then you're gonna see here what I configured so far. So I configured this one, right, which is turn off auto restart to update during active hours. Okay, so I'm just telling because if I have a schedule set up and server has, server has patched, and after that, right after the patch is done, within 15 minutes, the server is gonna be reboot. 
But if the server takes time, like say, so uh, after uh, I started at night time, but server takes time, long time to patch, and it cross over 8 a.m. And then 8 a.m. is a business hour start. It depends. If your organization business hour start at 6, then you can select 6. But I'm just for an example, I'm showing 8 a.m. Sorry, 8 a.m. So then the, what I'm telling here, if you restart schedule is set it up, right after finish the patch installation, then after 15 minutes, reboot the server. But that, if that schedule cross the 8 a.m., then it's not gonna re restart. That means that schedule will be true before 8 a.m. But if it is cross 8 a.m., then that statement not gonna be true, it's gonna be false. Because I have another setup, I'm saying, restart the server. But, but if it is cross these active hours, then it's not gonna be reboot. So this is the business hour. So I'm telling through this policy that if you have any kind of restart policy, that policy not gonna be effect if it is cross this schedule. And then this one is always automatically restart the at the scheduled time. That's what I'm saying. That's what I said. 15 minutes, that means after you install the patch, within 15 minutes, the server will be reboot automatically. This is the schedule, automatic schedule. And then configure automatic updates. So in here, in here, you're gonna specify when. So our plan is to actually, uh, when is the Thursday, right? Every Thursday, every Thursday means, actually it's not every Thursday, it's gonna follow this schedule. Here is another option, it's a third week. Of the first options I said, schedule installed by five, number five. Number five is nothing, it's just serial. It's every Thursday, that means every week Thursday, right? The first statement I'm saying every week Thursday, but after that, in here I'm saying third week of the month. That means third week of every month Thursday. Third week Thursday. Third week Thursday of the month. That's what I'm saying. Based on this, you see here, development, right? Oh, sorry. It's a second Thursday, right? So let's change it. It's not this one, it's the second. And apply and okay. Okay, now specify intranet Microsoft update service location. Click here. In here, what are you gonna do? In here, what are you gonna do? You have to enable the policy and then set the in, intranet, not internet, intranet service for detecting updates. And in here, you have to specify your WSS server name. In our case, my WSS server name is SLB WSS. If your server name is something different, you have to provide that different server name with the colon with the port number. So same thing I did here, same thing I did here, nothing else. So I'm going to close. And then automatic update detect detection pre uh, frequency, enable, you have to enable it and interval hours is two hours. That means every two hours, Every two hours through the GPU policy, your client server will contact with the WSL server. Is there any update? Then it's gonna push it to the client. Oh, sorry, not client. Check for update at the following interval hours too. So, What it says, German, how long to wait before checking for available updates? The exit wait time for the specific value and random variant of zero to four hours. So zero to four hours is standard time in between any time you can set. So I set it two hours. It asks to you like how long you're gonna provide. I said every two hours check the server. Okay, and then do not allow update deferral policies to cause scan against Windows update. So that policies should be enabled. And 
do not include drivers with Windows update. That means whenever I apply the Windows patch, I said do not include the driver. Drivers you don't need to do the in that in, in like it, you have, you're gonna patch different different server, maybe different different hardware. So don't include the that hardware driver. You don't need just patch Microsoft Microsoft patch. That's it. That's what it means. And then this is very important. This is very important and uh, enable client side targeting. So how this GPO communicate with your Active Directory OU because your Active Directory, if I show you here, so our, our Active Directory OU has a, see I have a Texas data center, then I have a Windows Server 2019 then production, Windows 2019 produ production, then I have a Virginia data center, then I have a Windows 2016, then production development, so I have a different, different type of folder and if each and every individual folder has individual uh, computer, right? Computer object here, right? Different, different computer object. So then how your GPU gonna work with this, the, those things, right? So that's why in here, in here, so on the WC server, I will show you you have to create a, like the target group name and exactly same name. You have to provide on your WSS and then the G, this GPU gonna work. And actually, the actually I sh uh, in 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 this in this uh, OU I shows actually this is not these settings. So or the OU means like you're gonna after you are done with the configuration the GPU, then you're gonna link it with all those OU. You're gonna link it all those OU, then it's gonna be work with the, those servers. But this target the target group name is means if you provide the same name on your WSR setup, I'll show you because my WSR is still running with this one. It's gonna take long time. I don't know when it's gonna be finished. So after it's finished, I'll show you there is a configuration name. You have to provide the name. You have to provide the name. So that name should be, so you have to remember this one on the GPU policy. So development, right? So you have to exactly create a development. So we're gonna create one for development target, another is for a production target, production group A, production group B. And then um, we're gonna create like total total six, right? So six target we have to create on the WS server when it's finished. You have to remember it, right? So that's one setting. And then nothing else, that's it, that's it. So how many settings you have to configure? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So our development, our development link is done, is created. You see here, if you refresh it, and then you're gonna see here. What time? Every Thursday, okay, I'm sorry. Here I said every Thursday, but and how, what time is six o'clock? Eight, eight, 18 means six o'clock. If your business hour uh, after hours is at 8 a.m., then you have to set uh, 20, but that means eight o'clock. So it's just an example, right? And everything is disable, disable, disable. And here I say second week of the month is enabled. That means second week of the month, Thursday, apply this one. That's what I'm saying, right? So I'm going to close this one. Okay, now, okay, sorry. Uh, this GPU, right? So I have so far only one GPU, right? But I have to create how many more GPUs? Rename, copy, I'm going to create more GPU. Right click on it, new GPU. And here I said, instead of dev, I am saying, what? Uh, stage stage and when third third monday right third monday click okay now 
Now I'm going to rename this one and copy because I don't want to type. So that's why new base. And then I can say here, um, prod production or prod hyphen A, that means group A, third, T U E S D A Y, third Tuesday. That means third Tuesday of the month. It's a, a GPO name, so I can just copy this one. Okay, so another one I just created. Then another one for B. So you can say group B and then third uh, Wednesday. Third Wednesday, click OK. And then another one is new third. In here, you can say is a uh, workstation, workstation, and when third Monday, right? Monday, okay. So we created how many policies? One, two, three, four, five. That's what we explained here, right? One, two, three, four, five, right? But so far, we completed settings for only one right dab but rest of them you see i don't have any settings if you click this one see computer configuration i don't have anything user configuration i don't have anything so how are you gonna fill it up so you can do just go to the edit you can do the same thing but i'm i'm not i'm not doing like this what i'm gonna do i did all one already then i'm gonna take this one back up i'm gonna take this one back up first so i'm going to uh, say backup this is the name and browse what i'm gonna set it i can say on the desktop i can say new folder make a new folder and this folder name i said gpo uh dev dev backup and here i can say uh, SLV, just, just some name, it doesn't matter, right? Okay. Okay, anyway, desktop new folder, backup. Desktop new folder, I know where I put it, right? It's just a backup. You have to wait, okay, succeed. That means the whole setting, I take a backup. Now I can restore it. Here, here, I can import the settings. Here, 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 and then I just, uh, I just need to modify a little bit. What modify a little bit? So I'm gonna change uh, the schedule. I'm gonna change the schedule. I'm gonna change the schedule based on the which uh, patching day, and then and then and everything will be same. Only here, and and also only the target group. What is the target group? Here, target group. So it's gonna be stage A, stage, sorry, staging, and then uh, production group A, production group B, and then workstation. That's what I need to do. So only change here, and also change the schedule based on that. So this is a group A, right? So group A, third Tuesday, right? So go to the edit. So now we can do it pretty quickly, right? policy, template, because we know where we need to go. And then Windows component all the way go down, Windows update, and we know. Oh, sorry. Actually, what I, first we have to import it, right? Because it's, it's a blank GPU now. We have just name, nothing else, nothing inside. So first input all of them, in, import it, click next, next. From where you see the location. The location is already there, so new from the new folder, right? Okay, and next, you see WSS policy for dev. You see? Next. Next. And finish. See succeed. So now it's you see, it's a prod server, right? But we import it from the dev server, which one we take the backup, right? Now you see. The same thing is the development, but actually it's not development, it's the so we're gonna modify it. So 
first I'm going to input it for all of them from the backup, which is our depth secondary settings we take backup, right? So from there, I'm going to import the settings. Next, 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 finish. And it's done. It's pretty simple, right? And then from this one, right click, import settings, next, 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 finish. Okay, I imported. See how easy it is, right? Just import it. Next, 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 and finish. Because I know all of them have the same kind of settings. Only two places I have to change. So now all of them have the same setting as dev, but we have to change based on the schedule and also the group, target group, right? So for first go to the edit option for this one production this is production a right a group a so you can go to the policy administrative template windows component go all the way down and windows update right so expand it okay expand it a little like this way so which one we need to change this one configure automatic updates and also target group right two places automatic updates click here the schedule, right? So uh, this one is for Tuesday, and which Tuesday is third week, third week, right? Third week Tuesday, right? Same time, eighteen, right? Same time, and click apply. Okay, so just two places we change, and in our in the last one settings here, and it, it, you're gonna say this one is. Uh, you can say P R O D prod hyphen G R O U P group hyphen A. So exactly whatever the if it is capital letter, you have to put a capital. So exactly we're gonna do the same settings when our WSR server is ready. That time we're gonna create a target name on the WSR server. But right now the server is not ready yet, but we are going to configure the GPU. Okay. So what we did for group A, right? The same thing we're gonna do for B. That's it, it's done. So if you refresh the now, this policy, this policy is ready. This policy is ready, you see here, uh, the every Tuesday at six o'clock. And what time is the third week of the month? Is the third week? It's the third week of the month, you see here? Third week is highlighted, is enabled. Rest of them is disabled, third week is enabled, right? Okay. And also the target group name, you see? This one is the target group name, right? This is pretty simple, right? Okay, now I'm gonna do B. Go to edit, right click and edit. And then same thing, right? Policy, administrative template, Windows component, a little bit expand like this. And then you can go all the way down, Windows update, and then this, expand it. And then where? Automatic update. Okay. Okay, in here, what are you gonna change? This is for Wednesday, right? Group B, production. And which week? It's not the second week, it's the third week. That's it, two places I need to change and apply, okay. And then here, client side. On the client side, I'm gonna say group B, right? Apply and okay. Now staging, right click on it, edit, policy, administrative template, uh, Windows component, 
expand it a little bit and then maximize it go all the way down the same places same settings if it so it's pretty easy right so this is staging staging we're gonna do on monday right monday but but which monday is a third week monday not second week it's a third week monday okay and then line targeting is you can see s capital S T A G I N G staging staging so exactly same way we're going to write it down on the WSO server okay so this policy also ready now the last one which is workstation but workstation we're going to do monday uh third monday but morning it's not on a business hours uh, uh, after hours it's the business hours so uh the schedule will be a little bit different we have to change the time the so policy administrative template Windows component and Windows update, automatic update. So automatic update, what are you gonna do? Um, Here is Monday. Oh, I, I forget to, I believe I forget to um, explain this one. Configure automatic update. Number four is a serial, nothing else. Auto download and schedule the install. In here you have notify for the download and automatic uh, auto install. Auto download and notify for install. Auto download and schedule the install. Uh, allow local admin to access it so we all we all the time it says auto download and then install it that's it that's how we choose number four option so monday and at not six o'clock is going to be 10 o'clock so the scheduled time will be changed for workstation and it's not second week it's the third week right third week monday every third week of monday uh, uh third week monday of the month at 10 o'clock start the installation so we are done apply okay and now the client side targeting so instead of development what are we going to put it here w o r k work s t a t i one workstation w s capital so exactly same thing same way we have to put if you if you do here some spelling mistake or something wrong just put whatever the mistake is put it there the same way so that means what exactly same thing you have to put it there if all are capital put all the capital over there if one letter is capital then do the one letter is capital over there so exactly same whatever you have it just put it over there so that's it so our oh sorry i closed now. everything so our all gp policy settings is done so if you now refresh everything and just go to the settings, you're going to see each and every one has their own settings. Every Monday at 10 o'clock. Oh, oh, sorry. Why is there a problem? It's not settings. It's not It's a workstation. I think accidentally I close it. And it's not saved. Go all the way down. Uh, Windows update. Go all the way down. Find the targeting. Yeah. Workstation, right? Apply. Okay. Now close it. Refresh it. Close. Now check it. So the schedule time is okay. That's your recheck. And target client target the workstation. Client target is workstation so now the stage close close come down monday six o'clock targeting is staging then group b group b schedule is wednesday six o'clock and enable is third week of the month prod group b right and then this one close close and check Group A, see, schedule is Tuesday. And then 
this one you already know because this is our first policy we made secondly right so all the five policies are already created but i didn't link it so you have to link with your all the computer object so if you want to apply all of them you don't need to you can do individually so I have here endpoint, right? Endpoint that means I have a workstation. All the workstation is here. So I can link your workstation GPO policy. I can say link GPO, okay? And then, because my all workstation is here. So which one I can link here only? WTS search policy for workstation, I can link here. So this policy will be applied to all 10, Windows 10 and 11. And for the server, for the server management, if you see a Texas data center and be a data center, right? So if I link it here, server management, in that case, all the servers, because it's including all the servers, but do you think I need everything here? No. So I can individually link it here or, so the production, I can link with the production. You can do individually, but, the thing is, if you link it here all together, it's not going to apply for all machine. Yes, it's going to. Because all of them is not your production. So what do you have to do? So individually, production, okay. So individually, you have to do it. You, no choice. No choice, no choice, okay. So I have OU only for development and production. I don't have staging for each operating system. So what you can do, you can just, you can say, I'm just going to show you just an example of one of them. Um, okay, anyway, stage, I don't have a staging. If you have a staging, you're gonna have a staging separately. Okay, anyway, so for the development, you see here, I have how many developments, so all the development, whatever the development you have, so right click on it, development, link GPU, what is the development GPU? This one development, right click, okay, okay, development GPU is linking here. So all the development, then here development, right? Right click, link GPU, then development, right? Okay. Then I have a development here, right click on it, link GPU. I have a development, right? Okay. And do I have any more? No. So this all production, I don't have a staging. If you have a staging folder, then for, link the GPU with the staging one, right? So I have, uh, okay. So now you have to think where is group A and group B. So for group A and group B, you have to have separate. You have to do it separately. So how are you gonna do this separately? Then you have to maybe under production, under production, you have to say um, group A under group A or group B, or maybe you can, it's up to you. So if I do here, for example, I'm just going to do for one of the, one of them. Production. So this production, I'm going to make it another two of you. Okay, I'll show you one thing. You know what? Um, Texas Data Center. How many production? Okay, all our production. All our production. All our production here. Okay, another production you can create maybe two uh, organizational unit. You can say group hyphen A. It's, it's just for patching, right? And then you can say uh, 
hyphen V. Okay. So if you have that case, if this is the case, right? So I'm just going to show you in, in, in an example. So let's go here. So GP policy. Now, if you uh, go here, just refresh, you're going to see production has another group, right? So for the production group A, right? A, right click, link, your GP policy, prod A. And then in here, right click, link GP policy, group B. And if you don't have any group, just do group A. That's it. So for example, in here, I don't have anything, just production. You just link group A, that's it. It's gonna be under group A on that schedule. Link group A, that's it. You don't need to it, right? This production, do it. Link GPO, you can say group B or something. That's gonna be under B. It's, even though you don't need to mention group A and B. Right click, if you want all on the server in Texas Data Center, 2019 server, you want to do in uh, which group? B, that means it's going to be Wednesday. If it is A, it's going to be uh, Tuesday. Whatever you want. It's up to you, right? So this is how, okay. Here is another one. Link GPU. You can see this one I was on B. That's fine. All servers are going to be do on that day. Based on the your... You don't need to make this group also. It's up to you how you're going to reorganize. So we already linked all the GPU policies based on our all the computer object, right? And also we have a domain controller. So domain controller actually, you can have different policy for domain controller or you can add link it the GPU. That's also you can do. Because if you look at on the OU side, OU side, the main controller, how many domain controller we have? Three, right? So all three you need to patch also, right? If you link any schedule from here, any schedule, so go to the here, right click, link GPU. So you can use any one, group A or group B. So you can say group B, that means it's gonna be patched on Wednesday, this four controller. If you want for A, that's the or for controller you're gonna be installed on Tuesday, or you can do uh, on as a staging, like Monday ahead of time, ahead of your other production, you can do your um, domain controller if you want, or maybe you can go with the Wednesday, the last day. It's up to you. So that means it's, it's all the whatever the computer object inside this domain controller, all of them gonna be patched on that schedule Wednesday. That means what, how many we have? We have three, all these three machines are gonna be patched on Wednesday because Wednesday policy is linked with this. So I believe you understand. This is the group policy. The group policy wise we are done. Our setup is done. So just we just need to wait for our WSS. Whenever our WSS policy is ready, uh, we're gonna show. Uh, I'll show you after this install like configuration is done. Then we're gonna do some other configuration, host configuration on the WSS server. We're gonna create a client side target and also uh, what kind of paths you're gonna apply. We're gonna select like it's Windows uh, 10, Windows 11, uh, 2012, uh, sorry 2016, 2019, 2022, and all and and also it's just only security patch. There's a multiple patch and multiple update Microsoft release. You don't need to apply all of them. So that's what I'm gonna explain after it's done. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back when it's done. All right, so uh, <clears throat> the start connection, connecting was like trying to connect with the Microsoft. And I said, as I said, like it's gonna take long time. So I was uh, leave it here for overnight and <clears throat> It's done now, but I don't know actually uh, how long it takes. Uh, it's supposed to take one hour or maybe two hour, three hour, depends on your internet speed. Um, so anyway, it's done, it's completed. Now you can click on next.
So after you click next, uh, you can choose the language like English or any other language you want, but most probably it should be English because everybody uses an English language. So click next. Now select the Microsoft product to be updated. You can select it from here. Like we want only the wall windows, but if you want to do any kind of things from like any other things, system center update or any other updates, so you can do it from the from the here, like uh, as your site updates, any kind of driver updates, any. So I'm not going with this. So only I need. Actually, for the Windows, I don't need <clears throat> all of them. I need Windows 10. So just Windows 10 is a lot of versions, a lot of things. I just need simply Windows 10. That means it's going to cover for all kind of things, and then. Windows 11, just this one, and Windows 8, I don't need anything. Windows 2016 server, and then, oh, where's Windows? Okay, Windows 2019, and there is no 22, okay. So, Actually, the 2022 is not available here because the WSL server I set it up here is 2019. So that's why it's highest is 2019. So if you deployed in Tom <coughs> Windows Server 20, uh, the WSL server operating system is 2022, then you're going to see 2022 here. So that's why 2022 <coughs> is missing here. Okay, click next. And then what kind of uh, updates you want? Critical updates, definition updates, security updates, upgrades, and updates. Also, you can add check mark. Basically, you need security updates and critical updates. These two things, basically. Click next. And now, synchronize manually or synchronize automatically. So you can do the schedule, synchronize uh, automatically. So synchronize automatically, um, first synchronization start from this and then synchronization part day. Note that when scheduled daily synchronization from Microsoft update, the synchronization start time will be random offset of 30 minutes after the specified time. So whatever the specific time you provide, so you can say, um, 12 a.m. or maybe 1 a.m. at night. So every night, 1 a.m., it's going to start doing synchronization. That means it's going to communicate with the Microsoft. And if there is any updates, it's going to download. Okay. Finish. Begin initial synchronization. The initial synchronization with Microsoft update your upstream server can take some time. Or you can just uncheck it. You can say next and finish. So um, WSO server configuration is done. Now you have to do some internal configuration that means inside based on uh, your environment. So right now it's not showing all the computers. It's not going to show anything right now. If you select any. Okay. So actually I applied the GPU. That's why it shows some of the computer here. You see already. Uh, 
I applied the GPU policy, that's why. So based on the GPU policy is is showing here, but you have to make sure you um synchronization option. Okay. Under option update security okay, product and classification. So you can do the classification from here also. You have option, you can choose, you see here, if you need any other things. So I'm not going to configure anything here. But if you need, you can do it from here too. You see the product classification also here. So everything you can change from here too. You can add more or you can remove. And synchronization schedule. So we schedule it at one. Right? So if you want, You can change the schedule from here. But why is change the time? Yeah, I make it zero zero. You see here, if you read this line, it says offset up to uh, up to 30 minutes after the specific time. So your specific time is one o'clock. So that's why it can be happen in between uh, one and one thirty. And Automatic approvals. So it's default automatic approvals, but you don't need to do actually. You don't need to do that automatic approval. Um, and computers, how are you gonna update the computers? Use the update service console and use the group policy or registry settings. So you have to select this one. So whenever you select this one, that means the group policy we made is going to work with uh, WSUS. That means it's integration with the GPO. So you make sure you change it. Click the computer, like op options, computers, and then change this one. And server cleanup wizard, sometimes you need to clean up like um, every month. So, or maybe maybe every uh, two months, just do the cleanup because it's going to download a lot of uh, updates, but maybe some updates you don't need it, right? You are not approving. You, you saw the, the WSS is downloaded the updates from Microsoft, but you are not approving. So you should clean it up those updates. And email notification, if you want to send out email notification, you can configure the here, it's up to you, your email server, your SMTP server name and everything. So you can configure from here, SMTP server, uh, address and send a name and email address. So you can, you can test it from here. As if you can remember, like uh, when we set it up the monitoring system, the times we use um I don't know I have the information or not, so I, I can fill it up here and I can show you. Uh, so basically in here you're gonna provide your uh, organizational SMTP server information, and sender information, sender name, sender name it can be anything you can say, um, notif notification. W sus at slv.com something like that. It's not exist anyway, it, it doesn't matter. It's just gonna be um remind you that it's the notification is coming from which side because you you're gonna you're gonna manage multiple applications, right? So you need to know actually the alert is coming from, from where a notification is coming from where. And in here, email address, the destination like like if you want to send it to yourself or your team. So provide the distribution list DL here or if you use your team and, or if you want to use specific email address, just assign the specific email address, comma, then another email address, whatever you want.
So yeah, that's it in here on the option side. So now if you go here, all updates, unapproved, and any updates, refresh, it's not gonna show you anything because it's gonna take time. And also the reason is you have to be, um, synchronization. So the synchronization manual succeed Zero when five six is one six a.m. So you have to do another. This is it, like force synchronization right now if you want, because schedule wise, schedule wise tonight one a.m. Um, is gonna be doing another. Um, scan synchronization. That means it's gonna check the Microsoft right. But now I'm trying to do it right now, right away here. So it it gonna take time. In the meantime, I can show you actually. Uh, it's just organ organized your updates. So you see critical updates. You see the security updates. But if you click here, right click here, all updates. Uh, sorry, updates here. Right click on it. New, new update view. How you want you want to see. So you can say updates are in a specific classification and a specified product. So click here, click here, and then write down here, okay, if say uh, Windows Server 2016, for example, right? And then click classification, okay. So classification, I don't want all, I critical updates, and uh, and also I want security updates. That's it. And what kind of product? So from the product, uncheck all, and then go all the way down, and select only 2016. Okay, so that means you customize this, click okay. So now, if you click here, it's gonna show you only unapproved and also just go to go for any and refresh. So whenever you have, right now I don't have any updates downloaded here from the Microsoft because it's just a new server I just uh, implemented. It's gonna take time. So that's why we are doing here um, synchronization here right now because it's running. So after that, maybe you wanna see some updates. So all updates is gonna show everything together. Windows 10, Windows 16, Windows, 19 everything together so it's gonna make you confused so that's why we are just just organizing the updates so it, now we just customize for windows 2016 uh, Windows server 2016 so whenever you click it here you're gonna see only the updates related to the 2016 so th the same way now we can make all of like all other os right new updates so what are you gonna do uh classification and product. And then here, uh, this is the, the third one is specify a name. It doesn't matter whatever you want, you can put it here, uh, this, this step, third step. So since we are doing for Windows Server, you can type Windows Server, it said um, 2019, right? And then classification, not all, or you want only critical and uh, says, uh, security updates. If you need more, you can update, you can just check mark on it. It's up to you. But most of the case, we just need critical updates and security updates. And the product is for this one is dedicated for the 2019, right? So uh, uncheck it and go all the way down. And from here, find out 2019. Okay, we'll just have a 2019. That's it. And okay. So this is ready, right? And now, what are you going to do? New updates, same thing, right? And Windows Server 2022. But 2020 is not available here because uh, the WSS server is, is lower version of 2022, it's uh, 2019. But anyway, just for your learning, I said like whenever you have 2022 20, in a WSL server, you can do like this way. 
So classification, actually uh, we are critical and um, security, but product I don't have available here. So you, you, you don't wanna see it. So that it not, it, because it's not showing here, right? It's not showing here. 2022 is not showing here. So just say, okay. Oh, why it's not showing? So this is the same way you can do for uh, any, 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 any OS. So I click. Something in your updates, okay. So something wrong with this one. Yeah, something goes wrong. All right, so <clears throat> now we're gonna organize the updates here, like organized means based on the individual OS, we're gonna organize it. But before I do that, I want to show you another thing, which is um, whenever we install <clears throat> uh, WSS role in that time, IIS is installed here. So go to the IIS, which is Internet Information Service Manager, open, open this, then expand it and go to the application pool and then you're gonna see WSS pool. So WSS pool, right click on it, then go to the advanced setting and you're gonna see the Q, uh, QE length 1000, make it 2000. Uh, and, and also there is another thing you need to change, private memory limit. So it's in kilobyte. Uh, let me calculate it. Uh, calculate from here. Calculator, okay. So calculator is here, okay. So this this data, right? So one eight four three two zero zero make it like four times, whatever the four times is. So times four. So total this. So I'm gonna assign this number here. And I'm going to explain actually why I'm doing this. Seven, three, seven, two, eight, zero, zero. So exactly same thing, I just put it here, right? So the reason you need to do it, sometimes whenever you have a lot of updates from the Microsoft and it's downloading, it's gonna suffer for this private memory limit. And your WSS pool gonna be crash. So update service interface will be crash. So that's why ahead of time I just change it. Close it. All right. So now we're gonna do further update. Like organize it based on the individual OS. New update view, how you want to see that view. So updates are specified classification and in product also you can say Windows Server 2016 and then classification 
not all of them just critical and security update okay and the product is 2016 right because we are organizing this one so only we want to see this is the view organization how you want to see it so it's only 2016 okay and okay so see here so now all the 2016 updates will be showing here it's just your view organization how you can organize your view if you click here all updates is going to show you 2019 2016 2022 windows 10 windows 11 so everything together so it's going to be a junk point so that's why i said like organize it this way again go to the updates right click new this this then this one for windows server 20 19 and the classification uncheck critical and security updates we need and the product is not all of them just 2019 Oh, sorry, not this one. All the way down. 2019. And okay. And I'm not doing for 2022 because my WS server is, is, is uh, my, my WS server OS is 2019. So it's not going to show uh, 2022. So how it, it going to show? You have to install like on your WS server operating system should be 2022 then it's going to be sure okay anyway so whenever you have 2022 os on your WS server you'll be able to create the same way this is the exact same way that way we create these two now we're going to create for uh new updates <clears throat> we're going to create it for uh workstation right Windows 10 and 11. So Windows 10 and 11 is both together. That's why we can call it workstation. Critical. Updates. So not this one, security. Okay. And the product. You can select all the way down. Okay, 11 and only 10. So you categorize it, right? And then you can specify workstation. Workstations. Click OK. That's it. So three view you created, right? Now, if you can remember, whenever we created a group policy, and the group policy, we, see, we created a target group, right? So it's here, workstation. Workstation or workstations, whatever you want to write, if it is wrong, just put the wrong thing. Exactly the same thing. I said exactly the same thing. So to make it exactly the same thing, I just have a note here and a notepad for all the GPUs. If you go here, staging, you're going to see. The way I spell it here, the same way. You see, staging. And if you look at here, so I have all of them here. It's exactly the same thing we're gonna follow this because this this is all of our target group in our GPU. So on WSAS, when we create GPU, that time as I told you guys, like I'll show you when WSAS is ready. Now WSAS is ready. So now you can you can you can do it here. So if you go here, all computers is gonna show you all computers, right? like 2019, 2016, 2022, 20, uh, Windows 10, Windows 11, all together, but we want to organize it. So how you can organize it? You're gonna right click on it. Uh, sorry, here, all computers, add a computer group. So you can say exactly same thing, workstation, right? Click okay, workstation. So when you set it up and then say 
uh, staging, right? Add a computer group, staging, add, staging. And then group B, group A, it's up to you. It's, which order you're going to do that, not a problem. And group A, Then I think the last one, right? The development. So you can right click, add a group, development. Okay, all right. So now we have the specific group, development group, You see here, in here, all the machines is together. 2022, 2019, 2022, see? So, now in our group, you, you're not able to see any, any, any machine, but within short times, so whenever everything gonna be sync, uh, you'll be able to see here. So, I'll pause the, uh, I'll pause the uh, video recording and then I'll come back later on. And I'll show you actually how it shows in independent group as a target group. Plus all updates. Updates also not showing right now because our uh, update server is still synchronizing. So synchronizing unknown is, is running, is still running. So we have to wait because WSS server is not like you can set it up within one or two hours. It's gonna take you like maybe two, three days. So you have to wait everything to be synchronized, but uh, configuration wise and organize, organize wise, everything is ready now. So whenever it's ready, after that, I'll show you actually how you can approve the patch and then how you can apply it. So you can approve the patch anytime and then based on the schedule, your GPU schedule is gonna be applied to the machine. So I'm going to pause the recording right now and I'll be back uh, when everything is ready. So um, our synchronization is done here. If you see uh, the last succeed one is based on our schedule every night. So the night time, I think this one is manual. It's a manual uh, process which is done successfully. So every night from now, every night is gonna be due automatically. So basically this one will take a long time. And if you can see here, the started time is 11.54 and it's finished at 1.16. That means how long it takes, um, one hour plus, right? It's almost one and a half hour, almost. So whenever you set up the WSS, it will take to be functional, like it will take about one or two days to, to be functional means everything gets updated. So it's gonna, it's, it's downloaded the, it's synchronization means it, it was trying to communicate with the Microsoft and download the latest patch. So if you look at here, all updates, it is gonna show you the all updates is uh, 1,612 total, but it's all together for Windows 10, 11, 16, 22, everything together, but we don't have 2022 because I already explained our WSL server is 20, uh, 2019, but if we have a 2022 WSL server, in that case, we'll have that options to get that uh, 2022 also. Um, so if you look at here, 2016, because this one I already explained, like how you're gonna create uh, 
it customized it, right? Only the 2016 patch. And also the release date is not gonna show here. I'm going to show you. So when you open it, you're gonna see like this. So right click on this blank space and uh, check mark on release date. That's how you know, actually. So if you, you can do uh, like ascending and descending order. So if you click again, then just scroll up, you're gonna see it shows all the patches, right? And nothing approved. So now, after it's for WSA setup, you don't need to do every month. Setup is one time. Whenever you have WSA setup, everything complete, then the maintenance start from here. The maintenance start from here, month to month, every month, whenever Microsoft release, automatically WSS will download the patch. So what do you need to do? The only thing you need to do on your, based on your patch uh, cycle, like past, patch schedule, uh, schedule. So it already defined on the GPO, what time you're gonna patch it, right? The uh, third week, second week, third week, third week, uh, Monday, third week, Tuesday, third week, Wednesday, third week, Monday again for the Windows workstation. So everything is already defined on your GPO. So you don't need to change any schedule, anything. Uh, if I can show you again uh, on the GPO side, I, I just wanna show you only one of the GPO. Say for example, uh, say group A. So group A computer, uh, it has a schedule every th uh, Tuesday. What time is 8, 18, 18 means? 18 means six o'clock is gonna start from six o'clock. And then um, it's taking the paths from, it's gonna communicate with the WSL server. And, and also the target group, group A. So that means on your WSL server, whatever the folder you have, and how many uh, computer objects you have on this folder is gonna apply the patch on based on this schedule. So everything is defined on your patch, uh, on your uh, group policy. But if for any reason, if you change your patch schedule for some special case, for example, uh, think about um, any month where you have a, like a vacation time or maybe special government holiday, you cannot do the patch at that time. So he wants to change it. So you just need to modify the WSUS. Uh, you go to the edit options and go to the uh, policy uh, administrative tools and then Windows component and all the way down, expand it and all the way down, Windows update. And you just need to change here. You just need to change here, the schedule. So schedule is here. You just need to change the schedule when you want it. When like if you want like fourth week or second week, second week actually you cannot do that because you have to wait for Microsoft release. So if you want to change the date or time or anything, you need to change the on your uh, GPU. If you want to do the patching through the WSS. So now our WSS service is ready. Every month you don't need to do anything. You, you don't need to do anything. You just only one thing you need to do. Before your maintenance window, you just come and uh, just approve the patch. You see, none of this is approved, right? So select Windows 2016. Um, and maybe you can have them uh, like, now it shows all 2019 here and also 2022 here. And I don't know, somehow it's not all of them is not showing, but it's gonna be show, it's gonna take time because I just set it up. So that's why all of the machine is not here yet. It takes time. So we have a Windows 10 workstation, but it's not here. But anyway, it's gonna be here whenever you set it up through the GPO target group. See exactly, I write down the same name. So based on the target group or workstation, I already link it. You see the workstation GPO, I link it. Um, the workstation GPO, I link here. If you look at here, workstation. So this is the workstation, right? So I link the workstation GPU here. So whatever the workstation you have, all of them are gonna be shown here. So what do you need to do for the workstation? Just go to the workstation. Just I'm just showing you the option, how you're gonna patch it. So release date, right? You have to check the release date. So, um, 
So now this month is, um, this is May. So May, you see here, May second week is not here yet, right? So this is the first week Tuesday, today. So the second is 14, that means May uh, for this month patch is not released yet. So that's why the WSA shows the April uh, patch. So the April, like if you are not done yet, how are you gonna do that? So you can just approve the patch. Uh, I'm going to just show you how you're gonna approve it. This, so you're gonna select like control button, press the control button from your keyboard, hold it and then select the patch. So it's cumulative update, cumulative update for Windows 11 ARM. You don't need to do the ARM, just about the ARM x64 based because our all system is x64 we are not working with the arm 64. so cumulative update this one and also um dot net cumulative update for dot net you see multiple cumulative update for dot net and all of them is released you see here up to you see 49 49 so 49 means if you go back, 4.9 is this, this is second Tuesday. Exactly second Tuesday, they released, right? Microsoft released and that's, that's, that's the release date. So now uh, service, uh, 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 servicing stack update for Windows, uh, it, also the version 6, uh, 1607. If you have this kind of Windows, then you can select this. Otherwise, you don't need to. And then um cumulative update for different different types of windows version if you don't have it you don't need to select it but if you have it you can select it so you can just select and approve dot net dot net dot net framework so cumulative for dot net and 11 now it's windows 11 so this is for windows 11 and i'm just looking for windows 10 so Windows 10 version, if you want to look at for the cumulative update for Windows 10. Um, okay. It's up to here, right? Cumulative update Windows 11. And Windows 10, actually I see some updates like this one based on the version. Uh, but it's not a cumulative update. So you can do only the um, .NET framework for all 11s plus Windows 10. I'm not sure why it's not showing Windows 10. Maybe it's in. Okay, so. Okay, anyway, it should be shown here, Windows 10. So what do you, how are we gonna approve it? So right click on it, you can say approve, and then approve for which group? So since this is a workstation update, just select workstation and say approved for install. Approve for install and then click okay. So now all of them, Okay, it's success. See, everything is approved. And close it. So now, you see, the status is changed. Approval status is installed. So if you approve it, for example, one of the machine, maybe you don't need this one. So then it's not going to install it. You approve it means, it's not mean that it must needs to be installed. It depends on your machine. If your machine needs it, machine will install it. So that's what it means. This is how we're gonna approve. And now go for 2019. So 2019, same thing, just unapproved, for, check unapproved every month and then check any, search it. And make sure you check mark here or release date. That's how easily you can, you can Check, okay, release date, and then go up. 4.9, right? 
So cumulative update for this nothing, 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 nothing. Okay. Just go to the properties, edit update view. Okay. So the reason is showing all of them together because I know why. It's all together. So somehow, somehow our view is not working. You have to make sure you are doing the classification, which I already did, but I'm not sure somehow it's removed. So update the classification and up a specific product. Um, any classification, don't do all of them. Just critical and security updates, okay. And the product is 2016, this one, right? Okay, uncheck everything and go all the way down, all the way down. And here you're gonna see 2016, just this one. Okay, and okay. So now you're gonna see the different story. Now it shows only 2016. So I think the workstation is doing the same thing. Um, I'm going to reorganize my view, that's the edit view, my classification, because it shows all of them. I don't know why. Somehow it's uh, my previous view uh, 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 removed. So critical and security, we just did two. And specific the product, you can create uh, Windows 10 separately, Windows 11 separately, if you want. And then I'm doing both together since I have uh, both together. Um, so Windows 10, okay, this is Windows 10 regular version. If you have anything like 1903, 1809, 1803 in your uh, organization, then you can choose those things. And Windows 11. Also Windows 11 has a version 22, uh, 20, uh, 22H2, 22H2, 22H3 or 4, something like that. If you have those kind of version running on your organization, you can check mark on it. Okay, and okay. So now we're gonna see it's more customizable. Let's see which patch we already approve out of this. So the approved patch, let's see. So for what we approve. So we approve so for this, right? So now we're gonna check the unapproved patch. Unapproved. And also, is there anything greater? Okay. Just 10 versions here, Windows 10, cumulative update. Windows 10, okay. So if you miss something, don't worry about it because you, you have to, you have options to come back and check the unapproved again. So mine is a little bit slow right now because it's too many. That's why. Say for example, um, Windows 10 version this or Windows 10, Cumulative updates for Windows 10. Just, just for an example. Uh, just in version this or this, just control button and then select. Oh, sorry. This is actually 
February, you have to go. Twenty twenty four, right? Okay, up to here. So up to here, Windows ten, Windows ten. So three things you forget to approve. You can approve it right now. And then say workstation approve. Okay. And done. So what do you did? So whatever the workstation, but right now I don't have anything because I don't have the, I have only one Windows 10. But if you have a 500, it's all 500 gonna be show here based on the target group workstation. And it's going to be collect through the GPU, right? So it's going to be installed automatically based on the GPU schedule. You don't need to do anything. And how are you going to do the ANIP? Like, say, for example, uh, from three, from three to, I just select three to all the way. Because it's, it's actually downloaded a lot of patch, that's why it's a little bit slow. If you look at here, the task manager, the server is busy. You see the CPU is busy. That's why it's a little bit slow. Okay. Shift and select up to here. So if all not approval things, if you want to unapprove it, how are you gonna, so you can say decline, decline, yes. So all of them will be declined. All right, see all of them are declined. And if you want to delete it, so there is a cleanup job, so you can clean, then all declines will be cleaned up. I'll show you later on. So uh, anyway, so 2019, now we have, um, Customize the 2019. If you look at the edit options, why is removed again and again? I don't know. Cumulative update for 2019. This one actually is the old one. Release date. Go all the way up. Again, go all the way up. Okay from here. Again, it's happened again. So what do you have to do? You did the updates. It's supposed to be saved on your profile. So update and this classification, not all, only critical and security. Okay. And product is right? All the way down. 2019, click okay, click okay. Okay, before we did it for 2016, that's why. Okay, so now it's gonna see you, uh, it's gonna show you only the 2019. So 2019, uh, April is just released only one patch for cumulative update and no other updates, 2019. So you can just, Right click on it, approve, and approve to what? Which group? So you can approve because you know, on development, you can have 2019. On group A, you can have 19. Group B, you can have 19. Staging, you can have 19. All four as a server group, right? So you can select all of them like this, and right click on it, you can say approve and install. Okay. So 2019, you approve it for all these groups, but do you think all of them are gonna be start installation? No, it's not gonna do that. Why? Because the schedule is maintained by your GPU. So based on the GPU, schedule is gonna be installed. And then, um, 
2016. So 2016, So 2016, only two patch release, right? Service tag update and cumulative update. So every month they release the cumulative update. So cumulative update means they have a multiple single single updates and they make it a bundle. That's why they call it cumulative update. So how are you gonna approve it? Right click on it, approve, do the same thing development group, all those, or if you don't want, okay, if you want to approve it for, um, say you approve it only for development. Yes, you can do that. So development gonna do on second Thursday, right? Based on our schedule. So now the third week when you need to install on um, staging, then how, what are you gonna do? In that case, you cannot, it's already, Approve, so you have to check what? Approval, you have to check the approval one. On, on Monday, because Monday afternoon at 6 p.m., you're gonna do the um, uh, staging, right? So how are you gonna approve it for the staging if you don't approve it before? So you have to go to the approve and search. Now you're gonna see the approval. So you can select and you can say approve, oh, sorry. Yeah, all of 2016, right click on it, approve. And then now select only development, uh, sorry, not staging, right? Right click on it, approve to install, okay. So if you want to do based on your schedule, based on your schedule, if you approve the patch. So then on, when we have the next one, staging we did, right? So, and production A, group it, uh, Tuesday, right? Afternoon, after after hours. So then before after hours time comes, like on the daytime, anytime or Tuesday morning, it doesn't matter. If you uh, approve the patch for group A, how are you gonna do that? So 2016, approve. You have to search for the approve because you already approved for one group. That's why it's gonna be go on the approval. Approved, it will go to the, um, Approved, it, it will go to the approved section. So right click on it, approve, and then group A, or if you want to add like A and B together, you can also, also do that. Right click and approve, install. So this is the way you can do that. This is the system. And then you don't need to do anything on, uh, so, based on your schedule time. So when you schedule it for 6 a.m., right? 6 p.m., right? So 6 p.m., you don't need to do anything. At least give them like two hours time. So at eight o'clock, just log into your system and check your system. How are you gonna check your system? Log into your machine. Just for an example, log into your machine here. Uh, go to the um, settings and then click updates and security and check the updates and it will show you it's updates or not. Check update, it will show you, but right now it's not patched. Maybe it's gonna find something. Okay, it's already patched. And if you want to see the latest patch, how are you gonna see that? You update history, if you look at here, it's gonna show you when it's installed. So if, any new patch is installed. Right now, I just approve it from WSAS. It's gonna, it needs to be downloaded here based on the schedule. So our schedule is for um, not, not this. This is the first week of the month, right? So it's gonna be second week. So that's why it's not pushing here, nothing, nothing download, but ultimately it's gonna be download here. So that's the process for, if you want to do that, to the WSS. And also another thing you can check. So again, on your patching window, you don't need to do anything. Just approve the patch from the WSS and everything gonna be like happen automatically. Only one thing you need to do, only one thing you need to do, which is um, check the server the way I show you, 
check the um, settings and updates and, and uh, updates and check the view options uh, history. And if you see it's installed, that's fine. And also to, to make sure the server is rebooted after patch is installed, that, that's what you need to check, right? So you, you need to check the event, event viewer. And then from the event viewer, just, just uh, expand it and then maximize it and then expand the uh, Windows log. Then system. So it will show you all the event log for the system. So what we are going to check, we're going to check after the patch, the server is rebooted or not. You should reboot it. So if it is not rebooted, you should manually reboot it. If you confirm through the settings, the patch is already installed based on the view history. If it, the patch shows it installed, so what are you going to do? You're going to check the system event, like after the installation, the server is rebooted or not. So there is a lot of events. How are you going to check? So you can filter the, um, you can you can customize the view through the filtering, filter current log. Then event ID. So 1074, remember 1074 is for checking the reboot status. Click OK. It will show you all the reboot status. Right now, I don't have any reboot here. So that's why it's not showing anything recently. It will show you here the reboot, like what time, who did it. Um, again, I can show you on the um, this one event, event viewer. Maximize it, system, current filter, fil uh, filter, current log. It's gonna take a little bit time because it's, it has low, it's a lot of events happen. You see here, 3000 something. So it's gonna be load all of them. That's why it's a little bit slow. You have to wait until it's done. Okay, so now 1074, you see? 5, 6, 2024, 20, who did it? In here, you have the details. You have the details here. Who did it? Has initiated the restart of computer SLV on behalf of user, SLV, SSCM admin. That means this is the user who manually reported. But if it is not by any user or any service account, then you're gonna see um, like a system, system rebooted. That means automatically is rebooted. And if you see, like, if you give, like, after two hours, eight o'clock, you log into the system, you see the patch is not installed. In that case, what are you going to do? Some server can have, like, this kind of. So in that case, how are you going to install the patch? So in that case, maybe some few servers will have this kind of issue. So in that case, you have to install manually. So how are you going to install manually? So... Uh, from your WSS server, look at what's the KV article, what's the KV number. So you have to open, um, you have to open. So search KV uh, 50 36 36 Hit enter and then you see Microsoft update catalog all the time go here all the time go to here Microsoft update catalog security update now you can see here uh, it, the same KV article for Windows 10 Windows 10 and 16 right 2016 so just click on download and click here, you see the msu, dot msu, this is the file. Click here and it's gonna be downloaded you see here. It's going to be downloaded. It's 1.6 gigabyte, it's gonna take time. So you can, after you download, you can put this file to a share 
folder of files and then from the share folder of uh, share files share location you can just copy to the your uh, your machine whatever the machine is not passed so copy to that machine and then right, right click and install so that's called a manual installation if you have any issues with any one of the server so that's the process so it's downloading now i'm going to cancel the download because it's too big so this is the process and that's all so this is how you're going to patch your environment So if you um, like this video, please don't forget to give a big thumbs up. And if you're new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And thank you, thanks for watching. And I'll um, um, next video I'm, I'm making for um, SCCM. So how you can uh, patch your uh, environment through the SCCM. Thank you, thanks for watching.